I'm uh, trying to see whether we're going to get any uh, usable weather. Um, so I've got an animation of the uh, satellite pictures um, to try and spot any any clear sky. Um, not looking too good. Uh, there are a couple of breaks, but uh, nothing nothing very long, I suspect. Cloud is the perpetual enemy of the British amateur, but it's their gritty determination to overcome both this and a lack of sleep which sets them apart from the professional. I'll try and get some sleep from packing the telescope up to actually leaving for work. Uh, and during the night, uh, it depends on what's there and what you're trying to uh, image. But if you've got a, you know, you may be uh, imaging one object for maybe half an hour or three quarters of an hour. So you know that and uh, you try and catnap for that time. Uh, and as soon as that one's finished, there's uh, beeps and uh, sounds that uh, try and wake you up. Peter's observatory is more than just an alarm clock. It contains thousands of pounds worth of technology from computers to imaging cameras. And it's this equipment which has helped revolutionize amateur astronomy. The availability of technology, which is relatively cheap technology, has been crucial in modern amateur work with the digital revolution. CCD cameras, pocket calculators at first, then computers of varying degrees of sophistication, then of course computer monitored telescopes, and all of them getting cheaper all the time. And in the same way that it was possible to have a telescope cheaper in 1900 than in 1860, so now you can have all the state of the art computing and all kinds of multi facilities vastly cheaper than would have been possible in 1975. Martin Mobley lives in Suffolk with his four telescopes. He's taken early retirement to become a full-time astronomer and writer and is among a growing number of amateurs fully to embrace this new technology. I like to have telescopes set up, focused and ready to go. There is nothing worse than suddenly finding this beard in a discovery and you've got to think, oh, I had that telescope in the wrong configuration. I've got to change those lenses, switch that over, put up another camera on the end. I like everything to be set up, so I have a telescope specifically for comets, galaxies, deep sky objects, and another one purely for planets, and that works really well. This is my 10-inch uh, Newtonian, f6.3, and it's ideal for planets. It's the one I use for purely imaging the moon and planets, um, but for looking at planets you have to assess the atmospheric seeing. That's how turbulent the atmosphere is, so you're looking through 20 miles of atmosphere and everything is scintillating, but now and again you get very calm conditions when the atmosphere is stable at the ground level and at the jet stream level, and under those conditions the views of the planets are absolutely mind-blowing, and that's when I use this telescope a lot. I don't know any amateur astronomer who doesn't own a hairdryer simply because when it is very humid in the UK and it nearly always is every night. As soon as the temperature drops, dew forms on everything. As you know, if you go out to your car in the morning, it's absolutely covered with dew, or in winter with ice even. And you've got to get rid of that dew some, somehow, and the best way is simply a hairdryer. And that is, and apart from getting electrocuted using it in the dark and damp, uh, there's, there's really it's just about the best accessory any amateur can possess. You couldn't observe without a hairdryer because of the, all the dew formation. Right, well this is the observatory of my main Celestron 14 on a Paramount ME mounting and uh, it's the number one instrument here, it's the most powerful instrument and it's robotically controlled. The cables from here go under the lawn, travel about 130 feet into the study where I control the telescope remotely throughout the winter nights. This mounting is the best amateur mounting in the world, bar none. Every amateur really wants one of these, I'm a very proud owner of it. Essentially I use this telescope with this S-Big CCD camera for imaging faint things, really faint comets, galaxies, supernovae, novae. And the images go down the cable about 130 foot into the computer into the, in the house. The telescope is also robotically controlled from inside the house as well so I can swing it around wherever I want to without actually coming outside apart from rolling back the shed and putting it back in place. This kind of technology has enabled a new type of amateur to emerge in recent years. Described as pro-ams, they're observers like Martin who are producing work to extremely high standards. And it's thanks to the quality of new high street digital imaging equipment that they can do this. You can even use a webcam 
believe it or not, for taking pictures of the planets that are as good as professionals could take more than 10 years ago before Hubble was launched.